book that I could have written as a nonfiction projection of the future. But the, I wanted to tell it in the framework of a story rather than um, a lecture on possibilities as things go through. So if we take the timeline for this book, it's effectively 60 to 80 years in the future. <laughs> The problem with sci-fi as it, as it modernized and it went onto TV is it became mm. obsessed with the technology and not the fact that if you had an actual replicator like, as from Star Trek, it would fundamentally transform society across the board. And so what we have ignored within a lot of modern sci-fi sci is uh, the social impact, the transformative impact mm. of just a small piece of tech. <laughs> are remarkable. I am simulating only a portion of the human mind. Very well, mind you. Only a portion, though, said Ada, and she was really into creating something revolutionary. True. This entire story describes how remarkable and creative a human mind could be. And there are no absolute limits to it. But where did Ada disappear suddenly with all this wisdom? Was she murdered? <laughs> One of the things we have to keep in mind about the main character, Cassie, is that we come to realize, and she comes to realize at the same time, that she's isolated. Uh, she doesn't know that she's isolated. Yeah. Uh, she believes she has relationships, but if you look at it, her relationships aren't with physical humans. Yeah. And they're with images of humans. And uh, in with her mother, effectively her mother's technical ghost. Ooh, ooh uh, I like that technical uh, ghost. Yeah. Emerges, and um, she's caught into conflict or drawn into conflict by it because she's sitting there going, "Well, my mother exists as a kind of a technical ghost, but at the same time, what happened to my mother?" And what? Well, and that's an old conflict for her from her childhood because her mother disappeared. <laughs> The way that I write is that I create the world first, and so I build aspects of it, and I, I have a huge amount, number of notes that go with it. I explore parts of it mentally and go from there, and then I just follow the characters around and effectively report what they do. And so there's a large prep curve that goes with that process. <laughs> If you can substitute experience, and humans are their collected experience, yes. what's the value of a human being? And that becomes a fundamental question within the book. You can feel about it the way you wanna feel about it. And if you don't like that aspect of the future, I think it's likely. On my part is to create that seamless experience, entertaining, people can be involved in it. Uh, the effort's on my part. It shouldn't be on the, the audience's part. And, uh, um, and we just let it unfold. Cool. So.